What's up, you guys? We are live on Facebook. Just trying to make sure the description's here for you and that I've got my slides ready to go. So I'll let people start joining us. And I um, guess I got to get my slides up, right? Because I'm going to be sharing my screen today. Forgot about that. So I'll wait for some people to join, but you are with me. I am the pitch queen. And we're going to be talking all things sales, so I'm super excited to share all of my... I calculated yesterday, and it's about um, 20 years of experience. I've been, been selling a lot of stuff for a long time. Uh, all right, view. Oops. So I'll be showing my slides with you guys soon, but uh, we'll get started started and uh, Amy's going to be rocking the comments. I hope you guys have some coffee, some water, um, some tea, smoothies, a, a beer, a glass of wine, whatever is your thing, bring it because we're going to be, you know, coffee is for closers. I love coffee, but I know not everyone loves coffee. So Amy over here, she only drinks lemonade. <laughs> So anyway, everybody, um, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited to tell you about everything I've been working on. For those of you that knew me or know me or don't know me, I actually had a company called Fitzy Foods. And for all of my past Fitzy clients, customers, um, Fitzy might still be around. So stay tuned for that. I'm working on something so you can still get your red chicken enchiladas. You can still get your paleo spaghetti. And you can still get probably your Fitzy bars too. But it hasn't happened yet, so I'm not going to say anything. But hopefully it will be happening very, very, very soon. And um, if you're joining me, hi, Alex. How's it going? Thank you for joining us today. Um, again, I'm here to help entrepreneurs. And my mission is to help you guys all over the world close more deals, get more clients, get more customers, grow your businesses, and... As an entrepreneur, um, you know, you're signing up for a full-time sales job. And I think a lot of people forget about that. And I would say that's one of the things that I've done really well over the last 20 years. So I'll take you back in time a little bit. So history on Michelle, a.k.a. the pitch queen. And um, my really good friend, Sean, Sean, if you're watching, uh, he helped me come up with that name. You know, I'm really good at pitching things. I'm really good at... Uh, raising money or whatever it may be and I was like I want something different I didn't want just Michelle Weinstein so we came up with the pitch queen and you know what I know it works I don't know if you guys ever talk to people on airplanes but so get this I'm on a plane I'm on the way to Seattle where my parents live and there there's a guy sitting over my shoulder and he's watching me and watching me work and then we get off the plane He's like, can I ask you what you do? And I was like, yeah, but didn't you just like watch over my shoulder for the last two and a half hours? He's like, I did, but like, what do you do? I said, well, check out the pitch queen on LinkedIn. And um, he totally remembered it. So I wanted something that was memorable, meaningful, and that someone would remember in the future. So that was really cool. Um, anyway, that's how the pitch queen was born. I ended up closing my business that I had for almost 10 years. I know some of you close to me already know that. Others, like I said, my goal is to keep Fitzy going, so just stay tuned. I hope to still, you get your Fitzy bars, your enchiladas. Oh my God, that carne asada bowl, I so miss it. Um, the paleo spaghetti, all of your favorites. I hope to have an update for you like really, really soon. But like I said, I'll take you back in time in history. And I, out of college, even in college, um, you know when you go to a bar and they have those promo girls? Well, that was me. I was hustling tequila shots and tuaka shots way back in college. And if you think about it, I never knew that that was like a sales job. But it was. I was always just trying to maximize every hour I worked. I was like, okay, how can I make the most money in the least amount of time and in college, it was, I guess, selling alcohol, but I didn't really put two and two together. After college, I got a really, really, really boring job as a financial analyst. I sat in a cubicle, like, all day. I was super depressed. 
I would go to work and wish I were in client meetings. And I was like, huh. However, I was in Seattle, and Nordstrom's headquarters was there. So I got a part-time job at Nordstrom's, and I was awesome. I killed it. I was selling clothes left and right. I have a lot of tips for you people that are out there that are selling in stores or in retail, a lot of good techniques that work that will help you uh, with what we're going to talk about today, by the way, is building relationships and building rapport. So we'll get into that later, but I wanted to give you a little bit of history on me. So after Nordstrom's, I kept that side gig going for a while, and then I was so sick and tired of sitting in a cubicle working, you know, that nine to five, I'm sure a lot of you are out there, and I was like, okay, well, what can I do that's really good with numbers and sales? Because I loved people and I love numbers. I said, oh, the mortgage industry was really hot at the time. I would get rejected interview after interview after interview. I said, all right, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't even get an interview. And I hated living in Seattle at the time. That's where I moved after college. So I picked up my stuff, my best friend and I, Kathy, if you're watching, hey, Uh, I moved back to Phoenix, and I applied for a loan officer position. Got a call the next day. They literally hired me on the spot, and one of my old bosses is going to join us for one of my shows, so I can't wait to introduce you to him. His name's Ray Sanderson, and within nine months, I was top 3% in the whole company. So, you know, it didn't take me long to pick up that I was really good at numbers and really good at sales, and getting people to talk to you on the phone was not that easy. Ray even told me the other day that I would be like crying if I didn't get a sale. And I'm like, really? I was crying? Damn. I guess I really was into it. Um, and I still am. So I was, I got to top 3%. They offered me a job in San Diego, which is how I ended up here. And I was the manager for the office, but you know, as a financial analyst, and I said, hmm, I don't think this job's gonna last too long. Uh, it was the real estate, time and I knew what was going on. I said, I bet this company is going to go bankrupt in about six to 12 months. And it did. So the day I went to quit, they actually fired me on the same day. So I was like, glad we're on the same page. We'll get to all that too, because you have to have mutual, um, you know, understanding of where you're at if you are working a job or maybe you're working with clients. So that's super important. And I was, you know, got my real estate license on the side that whole year. So then I started selling houses. We're really good at that. And I was just like, you know what? It was really repetitive. And I, I have a passion for helping more people. And with real estate, I was just like set just with that one client. So that's also why I'm so excited for Coffee is for Closers, because I get to help people worldwide. So any entrepreneur, or even if you're just selling a job, I'm here to help you because I've got tips that this stuff works, OK? So after my real estate gig is when I started this company where I was selling prepared meals. So I've sold everything from Nordstrom clothes to mortgages to raising a million dollars for my last company to um, right now I'm helping a friend grow her business. So we sell $5,000 and $30,000 education um, plans so she can teach people how to make more money and work half the time. I'm all about that. Um, you know, I... I, I've sold everything, paleo meatballs, chicken enchiladas. I've gotten into vitamin shop. I got my products into Costco. I've pitched on Shark Tank. So I've got a lot of experience. And about a year and a half ago, I was like, okay, how can I get this out to the world? That was my mission. And so I'm going to be doing it two ways. One is every week, Facebook Live. So join me Monday afternoons because that's what time you normally need to pick me up, right? So I'm here to pick you up in the afternoon. Uh, with your coffee or your water or your tea. I just had some tea. So for those of you that don't like coffee, no need. It's just a name of a show. And also in a couple of weeks, I'll be launching my podcast. It's called Success Unfiltered, where I interview, oh my God, so many amazing people. But really it's about, there's a common thread for people that have been rejected a lot, people that have been told no a lot, what was that last thing before they saw success? You know, like, what was that thing before it happened? And um, I'm so excited for you to listen to the podcast. I've interviewed some really amazing people. I just need the editor to edit it all because 
you know, I, that's not what I want to spend my time doing. I, I need a team of people. So, uh, I rather just sit here and talk all day and answer your questions about anything sales and really how to sell without selling and being sleazy. You know, I think I have a really nice finesse in what I do and I think you can too. And if you're sitting on programs and products and things that, or, you know, you want to meet someone influential, you are sitting on a plane next to like a celebrity and you're just scared to death to even open up your mouth and talk to them, you know, that's what I'm really here to do and help you with. So that's my mission. That's my plan. I'm going to come up, I'm going to be here every single week. So if you guys can show up every single week, that would make us way more fun. Um, I love comments. I love hearts. I love if you share this with all your friends and family members and other entrepreneurs specifically. But let me go over the topics. I did type it in to the notes, but I don't know if they went in. So maybe uh, Amy can copy and paste it into the notes. But the first kind of month or theme, I'm going to talk about brewing relationships and brewing report. Yes, that's a pun, coffee. We are coming up with all these cute names, and hopefully it'll stick better that way. Uh, we'll talk about how to be strong. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna bring guests on. So, like I said, one of my old bosses back in the day from when I was a loan officer, he's gonna come on. Um, another awesome person, Garen Jones, he's gonna come on. I mean, oh my god. If anyone can sell without really even knowing you're being sold, he's the guy. Uh, we're gonna talk about your mind because your mind has so much to do with the results that you get. If your mind's not right, nothing's gonna be right. So I'm in a group called Screw You, yay, Jill and Josh, and um, the Screw Shrink is going to come on. So I am so excited to have her on to teach you all about mindset stuff. I'll be giving you my tips and tricks of what I do. Um, we're going to be talking about the blend, like how do you work with your clients well. We're going to be talking about black coffee and caramel lattes. So black coffee is like... You know, you're straight to the point, and caramel lattes, like, you kind of got to sweeten it up a little bit. So it really depends on your content, and, you know, you also need to know your prices for your clients. So what, how do you know where to price yourself to make sure that there's value to the other person on the other side? It's got to be a win-win for everyone. And then, like I said, when I quit that job, it's very important for you to know when to not work with a client, maybe when to not take money from an investor, these stories are also on the podcast, so make sure to tune into that in a couple weeks. Uh, you can, so we set up this really cool thing called a bot, a messenger bot. So everyone on Facebook who wants to be announced of our shows every week, or you want to know when the podcast is going to launch, or any of that kind of stuff, just type in show down in the comments, and you'll get opted into the bot. I also made some really cool like PDF worksheets for you to use. And um, I haven't really figured out how to get them to you, but if you just type in show below, I'll make sure that you get the first one, which is a really nice worksheet on how to build the best relationships and best rapport with your clients, customers, whatever it may be, whoever you're with. And, you know, I challenge each of you to actually try some of this, like right away, when you're in line at Starbucks. When you're sitting on a plane, um, I have a great story for that. Actually, let me just share it real quick. So I was on a plane pitching to investors in San Francisco, and I was sitting in the airport, and I was literally like, if there's, this were my laptop, I was like typing that last email before the lady is like, you need to get on the plane, Michelle. I was like, okay, okay, but I got to send this last email. And these guys came running after me, and they were in suits. And they're like, wow, that must have been an important email. I'm like, well, every email I send is very important. Thank you. What do you guys do? You're all dressed up. Are you investment bankers? And he's like, well, yeah, how did you know? I'm like, you all look the same. Anyway, the flight attendant or the gate agent sat me next to them. I had just got done pitching four private equity firms. So I sit next to them, and I get to sit right in the middle of them. So it's like one guy, me and another guy, and hopefully he's going to come on the show one day because he's awesome. Anyway, his name's Frank, and I'm sitting, and he's like, well, what have you been doing all day? I'm like, I just pitched four people. Do you guys want to be my fifth? You guys look like maybe you have some money, and you might want to make an investment. 
And he's like, okay, let's hear it. Because trust me, when you start asking people, they will start responding to you. They, they won't ignore you. I, I promise you, they won't ignore you. So I did my whole pitch. And he's like, you know what? I am not the right type of investor. But I have this guy who you need to meet. And he would be perfect for you. His name's Curtis. He's in San Diego. And I was like, okay, cool. Anyway, long story short, because today is, you know, I've got a lot to talk about, and I know you all don't have too much time, so I don't want to take up your whole day. But the biggest thing is, is that when you start talking to people sitting next to you on the plane, you'll never believe how many amazing people I met on a plane, especially if you pay for an upgraded seat. You even meet some really cool people, because anyone who's willing to spend a little extra money on an upgraded seat has got something interesting going on. So anyway, Frank introduced me to Curtis. Um, Curtis ended up being our, uh, my CIO for about a year at my last company. We're still really great friends. I think one day you'll help me with the pitch queen stuff. Curtis, if you're watching, hey. Um, but, you know, I've met some really amazing people that way. And that is the start of building relationships and building with rapport. And that's really what the topic is for today. In addition to that, he said, you know what? or this is Frank on the plane. He goes, have you ever been on Shark Tank? Or what about Mark Cuban? This sounds like something Mark Cuban would be interested in. I said, you know what? I was on Shark Tank. It was July. It was like 2012, 2014, whatever season four was. That's when I was there. I was like, I totally thought he was going to invest, but we were just too soon. We were too early. So anyway, Frank actually sent Mark an email on my behalf, even though Mark told me, you know, he's not interested again. So I thought that was really cool. And literally, you guys, this is on a 45, no, hour flight from SFO to San Diego. It's amazing what will happen if you just start to build relationships and build rapport with the people around you. So I challenge you to, every day, pick one person if you're in line at Starbucks, if you're at the gas station, if you're walking your neighborhood, like, say hi. Say hi to the people throwing dog toys. And, you know, there's so many people, but this is the problem. And my friend Monique will tell you this. We're like shrimps. We're like texting. We're on the phone. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. And you forget about all of the people around you. And that's what I think all of us need to start doing, which is what I call, like, learning your ABCs, right? Like, always be closing. I do believe that in order for really, really high sales, and we'll get into this down the road, you always have to be serving. But I like ABCs because it's going back to the basics. I think a lot of times we miss the boat on the basic stuff. And if you miss the boat on the basic stuff, then how can you get to the really good stuff? So let me get to my slides real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, that is not what I wanted. Show my screen. Hold on, guys. I'm just finding my slides. Oh, here they are. View. Uh, full screen. How's that? Look good? No, doesn't look good. I don't know. What do you guys see? This is my first time using Google Slides, so. Uh, Amy, we're having technical difficulties. All right, well, whatever. We're just going to roll this way so you can see everything. And um, coffee is for closers. That's the show you guys are watching. If you type show down below, you'll get a notification. And oh my god, it's like a hot box in here with all these lights. Hold on. I need a hair tie. <laughs> all right, it's a hot box, so i got to put my hair up. <laughs> I can't do this any longer. It's like I'm going freaking, this is my second time to the gym, everybody. All right, so welcome. Here's what I will be covering every Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon is for you guys. It's loosey-goosey, so it's not going to be like at 2 p.m. prompt. Um, what's cool about Facebook, and if you're watching on Instagram, hey, uh, is that we're going to keep it around two, so give or take an hour, Okay. Here are the topics, like I talked about, that we're going to be going over. 
So we're going to talk about building relationships. We're going to talk about building rapport. We're going to talk about it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks of you. It doesn't matter other people's thoughts. We're going to talk about knowing your worth. Knowing your worth is really important because if you don't want to feel like you're being used and abused and wasting your time, you need to know how to sell your products and services at a value where it's worthy of your time. Know your people. Why you and why them? So this kind of goes in with rapport, but you, gotta, you have to know your audience and you have to know who your ideal client is. And then pricing, you have to know how much to price things out for them too, right? There's, when I had Fitzy Foods, we tried pricing things low and we tried pricing things high. There becomes a point where you're just way outside of the box, like, way too expensive and then you have no one buying but then it's like way too cheap and if you have something too cheap then why would someone want to buy it they'll be like well I don't know about that there's something a little off about that so you really have to play with your pricing to see where's that sweet spot asking for the sale okay this is my favorite one and um, for all of you that are going to be joining me weekly uh, this is going to get really good because you have to know where, when to ask and make sure that you know when to ask because if you don't ask, then you're never going to get a sale. That's it. And most of us don't ask. Like you're nervous or you, you're like, oh, shoot, when am I going to ask? But you have to invite people to buy your products or buy your service or buy your program or whatever it is. You actually have to ask. Let me tell you, people like to buy things, right? I know I like to buy things. I was trying to go into the Apple store yesterday and buy those little Apple pods for my ears. And they're like, oh, we're out of stock. And so is every other store in San Diego. People like to buy stuff. But why is it that the word sales is awful, right? And I think it stems from, you know, all the people trying to sell you stuff back in your childhood days and throughout your whole life and every time you go to the mall the people in the kiosk do you want to try this do you want to try this and you're like oh no I'm being sold I get it but you have to get over that and you have to be able to ask for the sale when it's the right time and after we go through a lot of other stuff so get ready because you're going to start asking turning people away okay this is a really good one because um, I talk about it a lot on the podcast with some of my guests you have to be able to turn people away. I call it bringing your value meter up. And when you can turn clients away, you turn people away that aren't good customers, you're getting rid of bad apples left and right, that's okay. You don't have to get a sale or enroll every client on earth that shows your way. You actually, there's a whole process in how to do it, but if your gut tells you that this isn't a good fit, then roll with your gut because it's right. and. You know, getting really good at turning people away or if you're raising money, turning money away. Because if you get someone who's not going to, you know, work out in the long run, it could be deathly. And I've heard from a lot of people it could be like a freaking divorce. I've never been married. But for those, I think over half the country has been divorced. So you can, you actually have control in doing this. Uh, rejection. How to deal with rejection how to deal with being told no. Uh, this is my favorite topic. So a lot on, this, on the podcast, we go over these questions with an, a whole array of people, everything from NFL players, guys who played in the NFL, seven-figure entrepreneurs, um, comedians, performers, you name it. Everyone who is a performer, a comedian, an NFL player, or an entrepreneur, you're all an entrepreneur. You're actually selling yourself every single day. You, it might not sound like you're selling yourself, but let me tell you, you are. You always have to be on your A game. For an NFL player, if they go get super drunk in the club and end up on the news the next day, unfortunately, that's going to hurt their career, right? So you always have to be watching out for yourself and your reputation of you and your brand. So people buy from people, and if you're kind of messed up, then people aren't going to want to buy from you. Turning a no into a yes. So... When I hear no, I hear not right now. <laughs> and then I have a whole system called being professionally annoying because that's what I've been told I am. I'm super professionally annoying, but all in a good way. And I'll walk you through all those steps on how to do that down the road. 
And then, oh, the follow-up system. See? I was one step ahead. All right, let me check in with you guys real quick because how's everyone doing? You liking this so far? We have any good comments? Give me some thumbs up, some love, some hearts, some shares. I can't even see any comments in this thing, um, but I know there's comments. So I'm going to get a sip of water. You guys take a sip of your coffee. I think Felina came with some wine. Some wine. Okay. So coffee is for closers, the importance of rapport. So I figured we'll just start this month off with rapport, relationships, building rapport, building relationships. So if you have questions on this topic, please do share. I love, love, love answering questions. So that's my favorite part. So if we spent the whole time just doing Q&A, I'd be great. Doing the slides was a little challenging for me, I'm not going to lie. I didn't know I was going to be professor, professor Pitch Queen. <laughs> All right, rapport. Oh, wait, you can't see my screen. Hold on. All right, rapport, you can see my screen now. So it's a close, harmonious relationship in which the people or groups concerned understand each other's feelings or ideas, communicate well, and both members give and take. Okay. I have a great story on this, so listen up. One of my Scroopy colleagues, his name's Raymond. Hey, Raymond, if you're watching. He said he wanted to meet somebody, and I said, who do you want to meet? He said, John Lee Dumas. I was like, really? JLD, if you're watching. I said, I know John Lee Dumas. I can introduce you. Because a personal introduction, or because I had a previous relationship with somebody, I was able to build rapport with Raymond and make an introduction. So think of rapport as it was harmonious, it was give and take for both of us, because here's what happened. I said, Raymond, who do you know? I said, I really would love to have Pat Flynn on my podcast. He's like, oh my gosh, I know Pat Flynn. So we had each somebody that we could make a mutual introduction to, which was building rapport for, for one another. And what's really, really cool is that it actually helped both of us. And what, why it's going to help both of us is it's going to help all of you guys because JLD is going to be on Raymond's podcast coming up. So you'll learn a ton because these guys are seven figure entrepreneurs, right? We want to learn from the best. And Pat told me that he was also going to be a guest on Success Unfiltered. So I'm very excited to have Pat on the show. Um, Pat, if you're watching, we need to set up a date for that. But my point is, is that rapport, if you help somebody out and they help you back, you're building rapport. You're now entering that, what I call, relationship status, um, where you're going to have some sort of relationship with them because, A, you know, I told Raymond, like, it's time to step out of your comfort zone and get, like, start asking the people that, you're kind of nervous or scared to ask what, you know, if they want to join you on your show or if you want to have them as an influencer for your product or brand. I know I've talked to a couple people. You have beauty products, you have food, and you're looking for these big time influencers. People want to help people. We need to ask. So that's what you need to spend your time on is searching for opportunities for you. How can I help them? And then in return, You'll probably be helped too. Okay. Brewing strong rapport. These are my like top five things that you need to make sure and focus on uh, that you pay attention to. So being genuine and authentic. That's like ground zero. If you're not genuine and you're not authentic and you're going to fake it till you make it, this isn't for you and I'm not for you because that's not going to work. You have to be genuine and you have to be authentic when you're brewing and stirring up some good rapport. Like you honestly, authentically want to help the other person. And you want to try to find some common ground. So if I'm like helping my friend with her business, growing it online, and I'm talking to a potential client, like I'm finding some common ground with them. Maybe um, I'll give you an example. There was one woman I talked to and she had an accent. And I thought it was probably from Russia, but I didn't know. I didn't want to assume. And I asked her, I was like, oh, well, where are you from? And she said, oh, I'm from Moscow. I'm like, no way. My mom is too. 
I'm finding common ground. I'm building rapport. I'm trying to see, like, where is there some relatable stuff we can talk about. However, it's also authentic and it's genuine. And show some real interest in your conversation. I think this is super important. <laughs> if, if you're not showing any interest in talking to the other person, like at Fitzy, if they came in and I was talking to them about their goals and their weight and their diet and what they wanted to eat, and I really didn't care, they're going to know that. They're going to feel that. So showing real interest in your conversation with your client, your potential client, that's very important. And I would say if you're not showing real interest, then I would second what you're selling. Because if your product or your service or if you're in real estate and you're selling houses and you don't like the house you're selling, then you're never going to be able to be genuine and authentic if you don't show real interest, which starts from the first thing, which is your passion and your product, service, or whatever you're selling. Listen more and talk less. Now, this is a good one, and I still have a lot to do in this area. So people like to talk. When you let people talk, like if someone were to come in the store to Fitzy, I, you know, I'm excited someone showed up, right? So a lot of times we get so excited and we talk too much, or even at Nordstrom, if you're in person with people, you talk a lot. So this isn't for those of you that are selling like products where they're just, you know, on a webinar and converting to online. This is for more of that in person or on the phone type situation. But listen more. I like to say I use my mute button. You know, if I'm on the phone, I hit mute if I ask a question. Like, just let people keep talking. Try not to interrupt. And share a personal story. I think this is a big one. Like I said with the one woman who is from Moscow, I shared a personal story. I shared something about me. With you guys, I shared something about me. I shared something with that my last business didn't really work out how I thought it was all going to. But I believe everything happens for a reason. And I wouldn't be able to put this whole pitch queen empire together to teach all of you how to sell without selling and being like sleazy, you know? So that's what my mission is and that's what I hope that you all get out of it. Um, also, I was thinking if you want these uh, slides, I can send them out too. We'll figure it out. We'll put it on a link. Um, just type in show in the notes and you'll get in our automated bot. We need to come up with a name. So if you've got a name that you would want for the bot, <laughs> let, let myself and Amy know. We we're I don't know what you'd want to call it, but anyway. So relationships. The way in which two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected or the state of being connected. The difference, a new relationship... Me a new relationship may be one-sided for a little bit. So I'll go back to my pal Raymond. Raymond, if you're watching, hey. Um, you know, we started out with like building rapport and now we have a relationship. You know, I keep him updated on what's going on with Pat. He let me know that John's going to be on his show. We're keeping in touch with each other. And I'm always thinking about more ways on how I can help him. So I believe that that's really important. You always want to be thinking about how can you help people first, and then it will come to you in return in the future. So new relationships, you might feel like you're giving and giving and giving a lot more in the beginning, but let me tell you, it will come full circle. I promise. Just, just keep being real, keep being authentic, and keep just doing the right thing, and it will come over and over and over and over again to you. So when you're brewing a strong relationship, ask other people genuine questions about their opinions, about what they like, about whatever. Again, the key word is genuine. Um, always use the person's name. You know, I would, when I email Raymond, I didn't say like, hey, what's up? I said, hi, Raymond. I kept it professional. Um, you know, when you're on the plane and I'm talking to Frank, I used his first name. You know, if you don't know their name, ask their name. I think that's really important. Or if you're in line at Starbucks and you keep seeing the same person over and over again, like my Starbucks, I've been going there for almost 11 years. I've lived in the same place for a really long time, I know. But, you know, I try to talk to the baristas by their first name. Thank God they weren't name tags because there's a lot of them. You know, I'm a really busy Starbucks, so I have to make sure I keep up to dates on all their names. But always ask for their name. Be of service without being asked. And that's the giving part. You want to give and give and give and give. And when you give a lot, things will come back to you in, in return. More than you might think. I know it sounds ridiculous, but trust me, it, it really does. And 
You know, if you can be of service to someone and not have to ask for things all the time, when you do need something or you do need help and you do need to ask, they'll be like on it. So you won't have to worry about a thing. And then, you know, building strong relationships, ask them to be a part of what you're up to. Um, you know, just a couple of thank yous real quick. Thank you to Sean. Thank you, Algernon, for my amazing mic. I think I'm talking too loud. Thank you to Monique. Thank you for Tony. Thank you for Raymond. Thank you for John Lee Dumas, who's, you know, really seen everything from the last year to this whole idea. Um, thank you to Jill and Josh. Thank you to Tammy, my mastermind group, Dominique, Felina, Tina. I mean, everyone has been so helpful, like beyond helpful. It's crazy. Thank you, Amy. I mean, Amy came here. She's, she's an awesome intern, by the way. Oh, my God. I don't know what I would do without Amy. But Amy's like, I want to see a business that goes from nothing to something. I go, oh, well, you came to the right place because I'm starting all over again. So here we are about, what, two and a half months, three months later. And it's been a ton of work. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, starting over when you've had something going that was going pretty good for a long time isn't very easy, and I know that. But if you can start with brewing relationships and brewing good rapport with people, when you ask for that help, it's going to be so easy. Give more, ask less, okay? Same thing we just talked about. All right, this is kind of interesting. Probably makes sense, but why is it important for strong rapport? Well, in a poll, they, the New York Times asked, what percent of people in general are trustworthy? Most people said 30%. I would agree with that. I would say most people I don't trust, and you wouldn't either. But when you get into sales, you're literally building a foundation of trust. You have to be trustworthy before someone will probably purchase something from you or your company. If you're selling online, you've got to have a lot of good videos, good testimonials, good credibility, all that good stuff because people want to buy from people they trust, which leads to the next thing. They ask the similar group the same question but was slightly different. What percent of people that you know are trustworthy but that you know, not just general people? That's the difference. The first one was just people in general. The second one was people that you actually know, 70%. So when you build good rapport, you build good relationships, now you're at the trustworthy stage. So 70% of people, you know, um, are trustworthy if you actually already know them. So rapport and relationships do make a huge difference. And the last one, last slide, I mean, make a customer and not a sale. I love this. So Catherine sells really expensive stuff, upscale retailer. And... You know, when I was at my Nordstrom days, since we're talking about upscale stuff, I'll talk about Nordstrom's. Let me put you on me real quick. So when I was at Nordstrom's, um, which is an upscale retailer, and it's something I actually use in everything that I do today because I still sell a little bit of catering to a lot of pro teams. So all my dietitians out there that I work with, I love working with you guys. And here's the thing. When you provide a service that solves the problem or solves, yeah, solves the problem and you, you have like the best solution on earth, people will pay you a premium. And that's when you have to ask for those sales, right? Because you're solving their problems. Maybe you're creating less stress for them. Their headaches are going to go away. A, a whole slew of stuff that we'll get into in future episodes. But <clears throat> when I was at Nordstrom, I wasn't looking at every human being as a customer and making a sale. I was like, how can I help them look a little bit better? Or how can we upgrade her closet this month? And then she's going to like it, and then she'll come back again and buy again. So Nordstrom had some of the best training on earth, and I'll share some of that training in the future weeks. So if you want to know when I'm going to go live again, just type show in the comments below. And you can always add a thumbs up or a heart because I appreciate some love. And I can't wait to get to some of the comments. Are there questions or comments, Amy? Um, there's a comment. Um, questions? Nothing? No. Come on, guys. You don't have, Well, if you have a question for me, type it in the comments below or we'll get to it in the future. So it's totally cool. But 
So Sergio, I agree, relationships are important and they are the foundation to your future and your business. And also we didn't even get to the topic yet, but we're gonna be going really, really deep into referrals because I think there's so much in there for referrals. I mean, my whole last business was almost all referral based. We didn't really have a lot of money for marketing. So um, thank you, Sergio, for sharing. Really appreciate it. But anyway, at Nordstrom's, it was the same thing. It was like every single person I saw, I just saw as I was gonna help them feel more confident, upgrade their wardrobe, and they were gonna get some really good quality stuff because the buyers at Nordstrom, they didn't buy anything that wasn't of good quality. And I can't remember the department I was in, but it was like the younger women's department. But I was a little bit younger at the time. And you know, if when you look at a client or a customer from that lens versus like, oh, I can't wait to see how much I'm gonna sell them. You're going to sell them a lot more if you look at it from a point of how can you help this person? So how can you help them upgrade their wardrobe? Um, I have a friend, Melissa, she does wardrobes for a lot of cool people. And you know, I don't think she says, well, how much clothes can I sell you today because I need to make this amount of money? It's not about that. It's what kind of outfits are gonna make her feel really comfortable, confident, and you know, have her being really happy because that person's gonna want that more often than not. So it's not about making a customer or a sale. It's about creating a lifetime value of that person and really helping them figure out what it is that they want. So at Nordstrom, most of the people, you know, <laughs> or where was I? I was on a panel somewhere and they're like, well, how come every time you go to a store, someone says, oh, can I help you? And then the answer is, no, I'm fine. I'm just looking, right? Well, if the salesperson didn't come up and said, hey, can I help you? But, hey, like, I really like those shoes. Where'd you get those shoes? And they're like, oh, I got them downstairs. That person isn't going to be standoffish anymore. Now you're starting to build that relationship and build that rapport and really start to know and learn about that client because they're not put off by you. Or, you know, if you're a guy, or the guys at Nordstrom Shoes, right? I was there the other day with a friend. She's obsessed with buying expensive shoes and bags, so I just watch because I'm like, I don't know about $1,200 for a pair of shoes. But, you know, the guys, the ones that come up and say, oh, can I help you with that? I mean, what do you say? No, because that's what we're programmed as Americans and probably everyone worldwide, anywhere you are in the country, we are programmed to say, nope, I'm fine, don't bother me, right? But if the sales guy came up and said, oh my God, those shoes are so cool, where did you get those? Or those shoes are really awesome, have you seen these ones? You'd be like, oh, you're paying attention to my shoes and I'm in the shoe section, yeah, I'd like to see those, right? Like you'd be more open to it. So. That's my thing on that. Don't make a customer, or make a customer, don't make a sale. And we got two more questions. Um, so Paula- I'm Gonna get a water. Paula said, can you talk about how to use social media to expand your network slash prospects? All right, using social media to expand your network and prospects, right? All right, so we're done with not making a sale, but make a client for life and make a customer. So how do you use social media? You know, social media, A, is changing all the time, okay? So I believe two things here, Paula. And I've done a lot of trainings and I'm in a lot of groups that are kind of at the top of all this stuff. So first things first is you wanna create engagement with the people. So know who your audience is because you wanna speak to them. Like I'm speaking to you who are people that like to sell things, maybe you have a sales job, maybe you're an entrepreneur, and you didn't realize you signed up for a full-time sales job. So I'm gonna speak to you as I know who my ideal client is or what you call, you might have heard an avatar or you know, like I know who my avatar is and everyone else is just gonna sprinkle around if you like what I say or you're able to connect with me. So you wanna be able to connect with people, you wanna be able to engage with people online but ideally you wanna be able to really know what your avatar's problem is, right? And so for you guys, 
I would say that your problem or what you want to get better at is how can you sell without really selling and being like super sleazy? And you want to make a bigger difference in the world because you have great products, you have great stuff just sitting there, but you're scared to get it out. That's who I'm hoping my avatar is. And if I'm not speaking to you, then you probably won't engage with me or show up. And that's totally cool. There's other, there's people for everybody out there. And the other thing I would say is you want to capture emails. So it's like, did you all notice on Instagram like a month or two ago they changed the algorithms and now all I see is stuff that they want me to see versus before they were putting like the most recent post up all the time of whoever posted it? Well, times change. What doesn't change is an email address. So I would say whatever your in online speak your funnel is or your sales process or how you get a customer process, Try to get to the email. That's super important. So engage online, but also try to provide something of value to also in exchange for an email address, which is what I'm going to do for all you guys because, I mean, you can watch all these Facebook Lives all day long, but what if I announce something else and you're not on Facebook, then how do I get in contact with you? What I, my goal is is to generate the emails so I can email you things of value that will help you. And, you know, you don't want to provide things that aren't going to help your ideal client or avatar. That's not going to do you any good, them any good. It's just going to be a whole waste of time. So what I've created for you guys is, like, good slides, good PDFs, how to, you know, things to do and actually implement because I'm all about implementation and taking action. And I think that's how I get a lot of stuff done is because I implement and take action. What happened? Oh, you just saw Amy on Instagram if you're on Instagram live watching. But hopefully, Paula, that really helps you out and makes sense. And um, I'll take that topic and put it on a future week, and we'll go in a little deeper on that. So if you guys have topics you want to cover, you have, like, questions that you want me to talk about in future episodes, put them in the comments below, please, because I'm here to be of service to you, like I said earlier. I've got like 20 years of a lot of experience and, you know, it's produced some significant results and I believe that everyone should know this so we can all make a bigger dent and difference in the world and make an impact because I'm hoping that you're selling really, really good stuff that people need and when you have something that's really good and that other people need, uh, it, it really makes it a lot easier. All right, next question. Tips for building online relationships. Yeah, so it's similar to um, Paula's question, but here's my biggest tip for online relationships. If you're on a Facebook group, if you're on LinkedIn groups, if you're floating around Instagram, start commenting and providing value. So if we go back to this slide here um, in rapport, here, I'll show you. If you're in an online world, you need to do this, the give and take. You need to give before you take. You see those two words? That's the most important for when you're building an online relationship. So give and take is huge. And I would say get for every 10 gives, then maybe you can ask somebody for something. Or you'll start what I call like nurturing those relationships. Um, so I would say if you're on Facebook groups, LinkedIn, or other, other places online, and you've got a talent, um, let's use uh, Kathy. Kathy is my amazing, amazing, amazing uh, web developer who helped me build my whole website. And if Kathy wants to help more people build a website, it's in Kathy's best interest to go online and start talking to people that have website problems. Because she has a great solution. She has a great solution that if you want to learn how to build your, your website all by yourself, super simple, because that's like the biggest stressor, she's got a good solution, but she needs to give some tips and tricks and give some information first before she's ever going to see that person probably as a client. And I would say she needs to do 10 things. So if it's 10 things, it goes something like this. 
hey, you know what? I think your logo should be placed over here on the right-hand side and your opt-in should be on the left-hand side because it will do blank. It'll produce more leads in your funnel. It will get you higher conversion rates. I don't know. Whatever your genius is in your head, you need to give it away to people for a little while. And then that's how you nurture the relationship and will be able to build a bigger network of people. So let's say you're looking to grow online business. You'll be able to grow that online business a lot faster if you've been able to give to people. And this is like an insider trick. If you gave a little nugget of information to, let's say, Susie, well, Larissa over here might need the same thing. So start a Word document of things that you've helped people with because it'll just save you time in the future. You can copy and paste. You'll be like, oh, my God, I gave that tip to, to Susie, and Larissa asked the same thing. I'm going to copy and paste it and put it over there. So it'll save you a lot of time. But again, it's being authentic and genuine. You're going to see people that have the same kind of problems all over the place. It's no different than what I'm going to create for all of you guys, right? If rapport is the biggest problem and struggle for you, I'm going to come up with like five or six different tips, put them in a Word doc, and if I see someone with an issue, then, you know, I'll customize it and make it personal to them, but the message is probably the same. So again, if you're online and you're trying to build rapport and build relationships with people, you got to give at least 10 different, give to 10 different people 10 different things, and then you'll start seeing a lot of cross giving going on because whatever Susie needs, Larissa might need or John might need. And then, you know, doing some personal introductions. I always like to say um, your network of people equals your, like, net worth. And I think Damon John talked a lot about that, the shark. He's my favorite shark. But your contacts and your phone, th this is gold. And I agree. You know, the people I meet and the people I know – that's huge. And now I'm able to actually leverage it to help you guys out even more. So keep that in mind. Hopefully that helps. Who was that for, Amy? Um, Tammy. Tammy, thank you so much for the question. Hopefully that was helpful. Are there any other questions? No more questions? All right. Well, I think we'll wrap up for today because I need to go drink this but I, I think I'm out of my water. I need to go get some real water. And it's super hot in these lights, but episode one has gone fabulous. I hope it was really awesome for you. Again, we're going to be talking all things like sales, selling without selling. I'm going to bring guests on the show that I think are just awesome at what they do. So you guys can make a bigger dent and difference in the world with your services, products, stores, brick and mortar, online, whatever it is. It's all the same stuff. And for everything that I did from pitching on Shark Tank, I mean, that, that wasn't easy, let me tell you. I had to stalk, professionally stalk, okay? So many people. I hit them up left and right on different platforms. And it's not any different when I went to go raise money for my last company. You know, I raised over a million dollars. Or it's nothing different than how I'm able to have, I think with Dominique, we're at like a 48% closing rate for the whole month. That's really high. And that's all like online phone sales. So it is possible. It's just all these little things go hand in hand. And I'm excited to teach you all because this is what I'm really good at. I think this was my gift. I don't know how I got really good at it, but I think back in the mortgage days when Ray will be on the show telling you about how I'd be crying on the floor, I guess, because I wouldn't get a sale. I don't remember those days, but you know, however I got to the top at all these companies, I want to share with you. And the strategies, the techniques are all very similar. So I will see you guys next Monday in the afternoon, probably around 1, 2, or 3, somewhere around there. So just make sure you type in show down in the comments below, and you'll get notified. And then if you want these slides, type in show in the notes below and we'll figure out how to get these slides to you too. Thanks so much.